and welcome to this week's Inside Albania with me, Alice Taylor. This week and over the past few weeks, I've seen a number of concerning statistics about women in Albania, things to do with fertility, things to do with emigration, things to do with domestic violence. So I wanted to invite two long-standing friends and fellow activists. I myself have taken part in many, many protests throughout my time in Albania for these matters. I decided to invite them into the studio this week for an intensive discussion on women in Albania and the issues, the challenges and the obstacles they face. I'm joined in the studio today by activist Savima Albana and activist Lira Chapani. Welcome to Inside Albania. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure. Now, I want to discuss a few issues today. There are many, many things that we can talk about today. So let's see where the conversation goes. But the reason why I wanted to invite you both was I saw a statistic recently published by Instat that Albania's fertility rate, the birth rate, is one of the lowest in Europe. Um, so this was data from 2021. And it shows that the fertility rate in Albania is uh, the number of children from each woman is 1.21. Um, and that's fallen from 1.32 the year before. Uh, now, actually, the replacement rate is 2.1, so that for the population to remain at the same level. Um, so this is significantly lower than it should be. And it's concerning as well that this is one of the lowest figures in Europe. But I don't think it's a very simple matter, and I'm wondering what you think might be behind it. Is it Albanian women are having less children? Um, if so, why? Or is this something to do with immigration? They're having children in other countries. Edlira, I'll start with you. <clears throat> I think it's a combination of factors. Uh, one is uh, absolutely the economical factor. Like uh, uh, we've been asking for years and years now for more support for the family <clears throat> and the children. Um, we do not have it yet. So the families have zero support. The economical situation is, is not good since many years. So they have to, uh, to decide either, <clears throat> I'm sorry, either the um, mothers to go to work and sustain the family or uh, stay home and raise children and uh, have children. So I think uh, the most important factor is uh, economical. Of course, the other factor is immigration which relates to the fact that we um, there is a very big number of Albanians uh, leaving the country and the age is unfortunately now the age of young professionals which is also the age that they should create a family and have children so i think it's happening also uh, abroad mm -hmm. the birth of uh, uh, of Albanian children on the other side is also a social factor the social factor is that uh, the um, the age of uh, marriage is increased bit by bit every year. <clears throat> so we, we cannot compare maybe uh, with the ages of before, because now it's, it's a different situation. And on the other hand, it's uh, more and more difficult to raise children uh, in a country where there is no hope that institutions work, that there is a security for the children, that there is good education, that there is a, a future for the children. So the, I think this stops the young couples, not only the mothers, but young couples to have more and more children. So they think very well before having a child, can they support it economically? Can they do it themselves without the support of the institutions? And that, as I said, is not there, unfortunately. And on the other hand, uh, is, is this child going to have a future? And I think this is not an Albanian phenomenon. It's happening everywhere as we see, like the world is aging at a very fast pace. But uh, Albania, as you know, Albania and Kosovo are the youngest countries in Europe still. Mm -hmm. So I think we should really work hard investing to keep this kind of trend because it's important for the country, not only for a country, also for the continent. Of course. When you talk about support, economic support from institutions, um, from what I understand, you can send your child to Chadra when they are, I'm not sure how old they have to be to go in, in 
but this I think, is I think it's yeah. three months or even for three months. 30 days. Yeah. So you could have a child with three months. You can send them, and I think it's a quite a low fee. Yeah. And so th this there there is support in terms of you the, can send them uh, to childcare. But it depends on the kind of support because mm. you have the institutions. The problem is that uh, what kind of uh, service they offer. So do they offer all the service that is necessary, all the security and the well-being of the children, or they're just uh, you know. A framework of support, but mm -hmm. not with the high level standard yeah. service that we all look for our but children. Here we can mention also because not all the families can send uh, children, babies in mm -hmm. uh, public, uh, public uh, kindergartens. You must uh, fulfill some criteria, uh -huh. criteria. Which criteria? Uh, so you can need to be poor, no house, something that you can't uh, maintain your, your kid. And you can't afford uh, payment, the payment in a private uh, kindergarten or mm -hmm. school, for example. And this is uh, really very difficult for many people because, mm -hmm. as we know, before, uh, before, let's say, also before 10 years, the most, the poorest, make more children. Yes. Uh, the richest people, thinking about how many because the, of the standard of uh, life, they want to fulfill all conditions of the child. The poorest know, but now have changed the mentality. Mm -hmm. All know and all see that how can raise their children to have different lives from there, from their parents, for example. So this is uh, very, very important. When uh, Adira mentioned social, uh, social uh, problems, uh, is this and is um, the, la the lack of uh, uh, social strategies towards uh, poorest and medium yes. families because we are talking about poorest of poorest, but we are, we never have talked about the middle class of Albania, mm -hmm. which is not existent now, because They've left. this uh, yeah mm -hmm. not that left only, but is poorest yes, also yes. this middle class because there are many middle class people families in Albania that are really poor they can't afford uh, expenses uh, like uh, public private schools, courses for kids, because if you have a kid, you must think and you can yes. put them in private courses like uh, foreign languages, sports, uh, artistic uh, courses, etc. I said that this is very, very, very difficult for Albanians and the, the, the lack of this makes people Mm -hmm. to think about uh, their kids. You mentioned the change in mentality as as well as um, women having children Car older. I mean, my mum was 43 when she had me. Oh. That was quite rare, <laughs> 37 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have friends here who are having children into their late 30s and early 40s, you know, yeah. and this is more normal now. And what about, I mean, do you think the attitude towards um, things like con uh, contraception has changed as well? It's yeah. easier for women to get it. It's less stigma perhaps no, for them to no, seek contraception I, I don't think there is stigma but it's question of uh, money eh? mm -hmm. and mentality as well because many many young people who have not high education or open mind towards this they, they are afraid that they say no we must be married or we must be pregnant before 30 or till 35, etc., etc. Some very well-educated women who, who see to do their careers, they forget pregnancy or kids, and they said, first is career, first is this, and after I have time to do, because there are other possibilities, mm -hmm. contraceptive or other way to, to be mother and to be pregnant. So, but this group, second group is small compared with uh, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With the ones that do not uh, choose not to have children, but they are forced to due to the conditions. We were uh, we were speaking a little bit before about the what can the institutions do to support the family mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, this increase in population. One of the supports, for example, is in many countries of Europe, you support the family and the children by, for example, they have every month they have a. Uh, a small amount of money that they give for every child that you have. I don't, I, I don't remember. I think in Austria is. They kind just of, introduced it in um, Kosovo as well. Kosovo, Kosovo as well. makes so, now pregnant. That's, 500 euro. That's uh, why, because first of all, you encourage. 
parents uh, to have children and to, to support yeah. them. It's not that you they do it for the money, but you support them while raising children mm -hmm. and it's easier for them. And sometimes they don't have to do extra work or two different works and leave the children in the, uh, in the kindergarten and in the... Um, daily care because they need to work for 12 hours, but they can uh, balance more their responsibilities between work and life. So this is very important and policies like this are very important. On the other hand, we were speaking about public um, daycares and kindergartens. One of the problems that we try to address, uh, especially in the work with, uh, that we do with the local government, and with the women counselors, is that we're trying to uh, build or to, to, yeah, to build um, public kindergartens in different cities of Albania, because unfortunately they are not. Yes. So there are many cities in Albania, like even big cities, that do not have a pub public kindergarten. Or if they do, they close at 12, I heard. Some, of some they close well, at 12, some lunch. close at 3. So in some cases, what we've done with the women counselors is that we've tried to uh, have an extra budget from the uh, from the municipality to, uh, to uh, yeah, for the length of the day. So to pay a little bit more uh, the teachers there and uh, have the facilities like have more shifts. Mm -hmm. So it's longer and the, the mothers can, uh, usually the mothers who, who yeah. take care, so they can work a little bit more. Or on the other hand, to build from, uh, from the beginning, because there are areas where we do not have public kindergartens and they, they cares. So we are at, this, at the level where for the family, there is all almost zero support. We have the bonus of the baby, but that's on, yeah, only once, one time. Yeah. I'm quite and surprised to get that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it might be increased, but the problem is that it's only once. And you know, and I know, and we know, how much in these years has increased, the, the, the cost has increased to raise a child. Yes, huge. In the so, six years I've been yeah. here, the cost of everything has yeah. increased so much. Especially uh, in, uh, in Albania, but also worldwide. Yes. So today, to raise a child costs much uh, much more. Okay. So the, the problem is that the, we either um, support the family, as I said, in one sense economically, in one other sense also supporting by uh, policies that strengthen the family, that invest in the family, uh, family values, and all these other things that are important. And also, on the other hand, uh, investing in all these facilities practical. that create uh, practical facilities that create um, the, the security of the future of the children, which are those areas. One is education, as we said. If you have a good uh, educational education. system, and the, uh, the, the, the other one is health, mm -hmm. because if you don't have a good health system, is, uh, is one of the main issues that the country may have, but especially families with, sm with small children may have. So we've been protesting a lot also with Seve uh, about um, medicine that uh, lacks, medicine the, the hospitals that lack uh, medicine for children that are vital. Yes. So you cannot uh, like live uh, in a situation where uh, your child is not uh, treated with dignity and is not treated with priority. I always say that if we want a better society and a better country, we the first thing that we should do is start investing in children and in families. We talked about fertility um, and contraception as well. And there was something that popped into my mind. I don't have the statistic here, but I saw a campaign on social media recently as well about gender-based abortion. Now, I remember when I was pregnant and I said, oh, I'm having a girl. And I remember one yeah. taxi driver being visibly upset that I was having a girl and yeah. saying, oh, well, you know, next, next time, time better luck, be you'll better. have a girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you rise, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. I was, I had seen statistics which showed the balance between women and men in the country is artificial. Yeah. It's not where it should be, which suggests that this practice is still happening. and. I find this crazy as mother to a daughter. Um, and I wanted to ask, you work with a lot of women and you have done for many, many yeah, years. So What's your experience with this phenomenon? So we, we uh, had a very sad experience regarding the women pregnancy because many women forced by their family, familiars, especially um, mother-in-law, father-in-law, husband as well, they make abortion after uh, 
12, uh, 12 weeks. Uh, weeks yes. Because they see, and we are talking about uh, selection abortions. Mm. Uh, it has been a big problem for Albania, yes. the first country in Europe uh, for abortion selection. Is it abortion. still a big problem? It's still, but uh, the last three years we don't have a real statistic about this okay. because it was linked with a big corruption in the health system. Yes. Because who do, do this? Doctor. Uh, why they do? For money. How they take money. This is, uh, and now there is uh, no statistics the last two years about the selection mm -hmm. abortion. But it's a, a really a ring for alarm in this context yes. because still, especially in villages, uh, and still we have uh, girls that who, uh, for the moment, they are not in Albania, they have emigrated, but they emigrate and their mentality, husband mentality, families mentality is still there where they have been. So they, as you mentioned, they are happy to born a uh, boy if they have three boys, two boys, one boy, they say boy, not yes. girls. For them, it's sad to have a, a girl. And they force the young girls, the young mothers, to, to abort. This is, uh, this is very sad and we must talk too much for that. Yes, I wanted to talk, and this is probably the first time I, I, we're talking about this on, on TV. I'm talking about this on TV. But when we were talking about procedures carried out sort of outside of the health service, I was informed recently by somebody who worked in a public institution that doctors were taking money to perform, um, how to word this in a way that's appropriate for TV, um, to repair a woman's virginity. Yeah, yeah this is all problem as well. Happy, we have, still, we have funny not stories. Not just in villages yeah. or outside of Tehran. In fact, they're coming to Tehran yeah, yeah, to Tehran, perform this Tehran. in private clinics and the public sector. Oh, yeah. And I'd, I've written about this in the past. I wrote about it five years ago, I think. Yeah. But then to hear that this is still really quite common, still um, yeah. I was really shocked. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, I mean, oh, yeah. for me, I'm really shocked. And you two are yeah. just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's we're, we're, on the, we're on the field working. So yeah. in the, yeah. we, How common with is people this? That oh, yeah. It's not it's not really common. Yeah. Um, not, uh, fortunately, it's not common, but speak. it happens. It happens. It happens. It's not an Albanian issue. It's also it's an issue in this patriarchal, yes. still patriarchal other countries yes. that uh, uh, consider virginity uh, a must. So it's, uh, I think it, this is also a problem that should be addressed by prevention in order to raise awareness that virginity is not something that should um, uh, impede the creation of a family and of uh, well, a character. Well. Yeah. So it's and not a matter of, uh, you know, of, of respect of, uh, I don't know, your of honor or something else. So it's, it's crazy to think that we are in 2024 and still speak about these things. <laughs> so I think that there is more, is needed more work also in education in the schools that uh, I think we lack. Education. These are taboos mm -hmm. that we really need to speak about, also yes. with the young people, especially with the young people. We must see school well, curricula. Actually, yeah. We have had in, in association a very funny story regarding uh -huh. to this uh, virginity with mother in well, uh, Leja City, unfortunately. And mother forced the girl, uh, and after she married, uh, the first night, the husband was a migrant, and you find out that she was not virgin. And tomorrow morning, he took the girls and left in the house of parents. Oh my and he, he asked them to sure give, virgin, to give back to 25,000 euros oh. because he spent this. And when they came to the association, we loved, the psychologists loved and said, the mother, you are criminals because the mother uh, forcing the girls to uh, to yeah. to make virginity operations, which is crazy because you know yeah. that yeah. a certain percentage of of uh, women yes. do not even like they, they, they are built like that. So yeah. uh, it's it it is really crazy. Yeah, but I need to to see how are the uh, school curriculum yeah. about can sexual I ask, education. I mean, I don't think yeah. we can go into. I don't know graphic. exactly when they started, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, for my opinion, it's uh, better to start since uh, in elementary school, five in uh, five school. degrees, uh, primary school. Yeah. What age do you think uh, we should start? Uh, middle ten, school. Ten, 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 twelve. We, that's when we started yeah. in, in the UK. I think, I don't know how is... Uh, what do they, what age do they start learning about sex at the moment? And 
is it just very basic? I think it's nine. I think it's, uh, I, agree, no, yeah. I think it's uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's Early about 14, 14, 14. 15 years. I mean, that's uh, too late. Yeah. Yes, uh, there were yeah. girls in my school who were pregnant yeah. at that age. Because but it's, uh, in my different. opinion, it's yeah. still a taboo. It, yeah. a taboo. Yeah, yeah. Not only sexual education, but also um, the, the other thing, talking to, par talking to parents, but also about relationships. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only yeah. the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. sexual relationship, it's also healthy relationships. Yes. Yeah. Because one of the main problematics that we have, for example, in... Uh, now in the families and also one of the reasons why the number of marriages is going down is also uh, domestic based violence, yeah. domestic nice. violence yeah. and gender based violence. So uh, one of the main uh, important works to prevent it and to address it to is to talk to young people and to have it part of their uh, of their education yeah. in the sense of uh, creating uh, this uh, this healthy relationships in, uh, in, in the couple. Yeah. So knowing what stereotypes are, knowing what, uh, what gender-based violence is, knowing where viol where so when something is violence and when something is not, when it's, it's control, when it's abuse. So every, every detail on these things, uh, either uh, you know, verbal violence, psychological violence, we don't, yeah. that we haven't even discussed before, you know? Yes. So we, yeah. we just you know physical no violence and sexual violence, yeah, and violence that is all. Well. So they need to know what are the types of violence? How can they address? Who are the people that they can go to? So since the beginning, in order for them to and respect this, each other, this must start and with also family. To... Yeah? Now we mentioned um, domestic violence and gender-based violence. And, um, since 2006, there have been 33,628 protection orders. This is when the law on protection orders first came into force, um, issued by the courts. Um, 611 people were arrested for domestic violence and during the last year 11 women lost their lives a total of 159 since 2010 mm -hmm. um i thought it was slightly more than that but these were the recent statistics i found and the un and other statistics say that the the rate of domestic violence in albania is higher than yeah, elsewhere in, in, in europe first um I, this is not to do with categorization or anything. This is based on the international definitions, the widely accepted definitions. It's higher so than is, most other places yeah, in and Europe. And these figures Why? are the top of icebergs because yeah. really they this are is much just more. This reported, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah the majority yeah. we know the is not reported. figures are more reported. in reality at first and uh, during these last years, we forgot uh, to talk about domestic violence, women violence, because we are talking about femicide. And this year, mm -hmm. was 20 women are killed by their intimate partners, uh, lovers, family members as well. So this is a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. This is alarm. We are talking about uh, domestic violence when uh, more than 4,000 uh, uh, women have declared in the court their violence. There are, I don't know how many, 600 or 700 women, men are in the process of uh, in trial about uh, domestic but violence. You deal with these women every day. Uh, you every, speak to yeah. these women every day. And what is, I'm not saying what is the reason they've suffered violence, because there's not a reason as such, but what is, in their experience, yeah. what drives their partner to behave in this as way? We talked all the time for everything is economic part of education mm -hmm. and economy. These are two uh, elements that make women uh, strong or very, very lack to very double towards violence and to, to, to approved because they know that since the beginning that uh, men, their husband is uh, uh, aggressive, but they don't uh, uh, prevent this for, from the first step because they think what to do first, where I can go. We are talking for years because now there are laws also for uh, the rights of property for, for women because yes. before we didn't have this. And women think that they said, if I uh, divorce my husband and I come back to my family, to my father's house, my father said, nothing is yours here. Also my brother said, nothing is yours. 
Where are you going? My, my husband said, nothing is yours. So how we can live with my kids, small kids, how we can survive with, without job? Because the category of women who suffer from domestic violence are in general, not all, but in general, are poor women, mm -hmm. uh, uneducated uh, in, in context of uh, uh, schools that they have done and professional because a strong woman, if has, uh, if she has a job, a good job and payment, she can survive without yes. husband. If we talk about domestic violence and women violence, we are really, really, we must see carefully what to do, not with propaganda, not with uh, figures that doesn't happen anybody. Why are the figures so high? Why the majority of cases are, is male violence against women? Why are men being so violent to women? Um, well, <clears throat> even here there are some. There is a very big combination of factors. Sebi that has dedicated her life to the support of women. She knows uh, how hard has it been through years to improve the law, to advocate uh, for improvements uh, in the services that women get. But if I if I would start it from the beginning. I would start it from uh, also from the cultural uh, point of view, um, from the reason of uh, of marriage. <clears throat> so why do you get married? You get married because you're in love and you want to create a family, or you get married because you have to get married because you're at a certain age because the society will say that you couldn't get married uh, married and all these other things. So the 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 basis of the family starts from there. If you have a marriage that is settled by someone else or by the society and pressured by the society, of course, there are going to uh, uh, to begin problems when other problems as uh, economical problems, uh, social pressure for other things will come in during uh, the time that you are married and uh, adding children that are not uh, easy to raise. Mm -hmm. Of course, these problems start increasing and creating a, a crisis in the, in the marriage. On the other side is uh, the patriarchal mentality that we always say. Uh, when you consider women as second-hand citizens with less uh, rights, as a uh, in, as with let, less rights also in the in the family, when you consider them as a property that goes from one family to the to the other and has no right to have her freedom to to choose to work uh, to have her own life, so all these uh, problematics they start uh, creating these frictions be uh, between the the um, the couple or inside the family, especially now that the women are uh, uh, more aware of their, the rights right. that they have. And also uh, because the economical situation, especially of the country, but I think of the region, is, uh, is requesting for them to work outside the house because it's not possible anymore. It's very difficult, at least, for one person to work in the house and for the others to live based on that salary. So now it's it's almost uh, necessary for both of uh, uh, husband and wife to to work. Okay. So these are the social part. The, the the economical side, as we said, makes it it's more difficult. But in the sense of policies and what should be made in the sense of uh, strategies and more support, I think that as Sevi as Sev said, we have an improved law due to all the advocacy that we've done through the years. Uh, we have uh, maybe uh, improved awareness on the importance to invest in, this, uh, in these cases. But on the other side, we still do not have uh, this vision uh, translated into budgets. It's Mindful, because we're running out of time, but I want to ask one question to both of you um, who've been working in this sector for many, many years in this area. Are things getting better? <laughs> is there some hope, some positivity? Is it Absolutely. better than 10, yes. 20, 30 years ago? So there are two kinds <laughs> of uh, conclusions, I guess. <laughs> of course, because if we talk about um, awareness, it's better. Because yes. uh, People are awareness right. makes women more confident for their rights. This is very, very important. But on other side, many women have a lack of uh, trust to many institutions mm -hmm. that cover, uh, run by governments. Uh, 
as well justice, municipalities that have this kind of things, and in general, the government, in general government. So uh, we can't say it's better or it's uh, uh, bad. There are two, but compare with where we are now. We are in 21st century, we are in 2024, and we started to talk about domestic violence since 93, 94, with first, we did the first uh, law uh, against abortion in 94, mm -hmm. and still we are talking for the same problems. Uh, it's, uh, and Albania is so small, it's a beautiful we country, should, uh, and we know each other almost, uh, almost because we live in small areas. So we have very, two, uh, very big uh, steps and things to do towards this problem. Adlira? I think uh, the situation is for sure getting better, as Sevin was saying, in this sense. I, For example, I work uh, with women in politics. We have uh, raised the, the uh, representation of women in politics and the power of women in politics very highly uh, in during these years. So I think that what we should do is we should insist more and we should invest more. And as I said in the beginning, uh, the key to a better society is investing, start investing in the family. So with a little vision and with the right budgets, because it needs to be translated in budgets, if not, it remains on paper. Uh, I think we can, uh, we can address these is issues much easily that are being addressed now with uh, very few budgets and with, uh, I think also with the lack of focus. I think we should focus more, invest more, and uh, be more serious about fighting this phenomena that is, and is makes, not good for our society. And makes the real, uh, the low real. Makes the low real because it makes it work. work. All the it work. Just <laughs> is, uh, it makes bugs. it work. Sabine, Adlera, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for being a voice for women's <laughs> right in Albania yeah, as well. Mian Deo, we've been attending she, yeah. from, <laughs> the <beginning. laughs> from the beginning. She's been from the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's all for this week. You can watch Inside Albania every Saturday at five o'clock on Euronews Albania. You can also watch all past episodes on our YouTube channel and you can listen to us across all major podcasting platforms. Until next week, Miro Pavshim.